these are the stones that uh, almost had me on my <laughs> It's a bit better. My car. Yeah, don't crash into my car, Jasper, please. Okay. You know, I've never understood parents I in particular that turn tarmac drives into gravel. You know, their children can have fun on tarmac. Even a bicycle, gravel is a nightmare. Right, oh. it's time to give this a little test drive. Right, how to skateboard, Jasper? You've got to push forwards and then put your foot on the back like this. I don't want to ride Goofy. You want to ride Goofy? Yeah. Which is push with this foot, yeah? So hold my hand. You've got to push, push, and then put this foot on the back. You've just got to move this foot to here. Right, and what you're going to do is you're going to push once, push once, and then step on. There we go. So it needs to be like this, right? Like, see? <laughs> That's it, step on, step on. So you push gently and step on, step on. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly I have no idea how to teach children to skateboard. Not sure if I mentioned it already, but the new bearings on that skateboard make a huge difference. So quite apart from teaching Jasper to ride a penny board this morning, trying to anyway, uh, I'm going to talk about power wall. Yeah, so I don't own a power wall and my parents don't own a power wall. So um, instead, what I thought I'd show you is there's no sun, which is really going to make this difficult. But I have basically like a mini version. After all, what is a power wall? It's basically just a big battery. And it kind of helps if you then fill that big battery with solar energy or at least off-peak energy at night because that's the whole point of, of having a battery storage system in your home is to shift power from when it's generated to when you want to use it. I'm going to fill this here battery with solar energy from this. So oh, it's got a bit of power. It's actually got more power than I thought it would have. A bit in there. And then we unfurl the solar panel. Ugh. Plugged into here. Now in theory, charging. There's diddly squat sun at the moment, so I doubt there's gonna actually put any measurable amount of power in. What's that? Battery, solar panel. Anyway, you get the idea. One of the things that I love about the concept of power walls and solar panels is that power independence. Energy independence is something that, I don't know why I've always loved the idea of independent energy. I mean, the way I think about it is if there was some kind of alien inspired apocalypse, you would want to have the ability to generate your own energy. If I do get a power wall and a big solar array and the right kind of inverter, then if there is an apocalypse, I will be able to continue driving my car. That's it, well done. Now push and put your foot on the back. Yay! Good job, Jazzy. You've learned something new. Fist bump. Excellent. More or less got too many skateboards now. Oh my word, it is a miracle. It has officially charged it up, a whole extra bar. Good solar panel. I particularly like the fact that it folds. Folding is always good. Solar panels and skateboards. Bit of a flying visit this week. Just quickly before we go, I can't resist putting this little bit in. 
Daimler are apparently no longer saying that fuel cells are a core part of the future of their business. Well, duh. Instead, they're going to concentrate on, you guessed it, battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids. And you know why? Because the real advantages of fuel cells are basically disappearing and all the disadvantages are staying, you know, versus batteries. I mean, for example, batteries are getting longer and longer ranges, they're charging quicker and quicker, you've got the 150 kilowatt CCS around the corner, most new EVs are going to come with sort of 60, 50, 60 kilowatts, kilowatt hours of storage, so range is nothing like so much of a problem, and at the same time, hydrogen is still ridiculously expensive, you've still got to truck it around the place, you've got huge infrastructure costs, and none of those problems are moving in the right direction at all at the moment. So there we go. Just I, I had to I had to put that in there because as you probably know already, I'm not a massive fan of hydrogen. I actually think it's a totally rubbish idea for cars. Whereas battery vehicles, quite a big fan of those. Uh, no fingers monkey. Come on. <laughs> you see, the vision that I've got for the Powerwall and similar products is you know once they drop to a price where they're basically included with every house or at least every homeowner will go out and buy one and fit it so that you know they all save money because they can shift their you know energy usage to whichever point in the day it's cheapest to do that and also if they have solar panels they get to benefit further from that energy that they generate by making sure that they use the energy rather than having to send it back into the grid. If every house has got that kind of energy storage, then it starts to make real sense putting together a proper smart grid that can move the power around to the places it's needed. And, you know, I mean, you're sort of 50% of the way to taking the UK more or less off grid for nine months of the year. And as we proved with my you know tiny little solar panel outside actually even when it's cloudy you can generate a really sensible amount of power i certainly generated more in those few hours than i was thinking i mean yeah obviously you generate a lot less but you know even if it's 10 20 percent that's actually still quite a lot of power you know solar panels are that good that's the kind of thing that I think is going to happen eventually. It's the kind of thing that I think Tesla want to be a part of making happen. I think a lot of people, especially, you know, the sort of oil end of things, don't really appreciate the, the realistic nature of that future. Because if they did, then they would be investing in being part of that. I mean, you, you wait and see what happens to all these automakers, the ones which are like, nope, EVs are never going to work. I do also appreciate the fact that power walls are quite sleekly designed in classic Tesla fashion or Apple fashion even. Of course, EVs themselves actually have a part to play in this energy network of the future because you're going to have probably a couple of times more energy storage in your car than the house will use in a day. So it makes perfect sense to combine that with the house's storage. So when you're at home and your car's plugged in, you're talking about a really sizable quantity of power storage. And because the cost of that storage is spread amongst the 20 million households in this country alone, it's actually a doable solution, which is, one of the reasons why I don't think something like in-road inductive charging is ever really likely to take off. Maybe in a couple of fringe cases like buses in a city somewhere, perhaps. But for the general consumer, sort of down the motorway, never gonna happen because all that cost will wind up getting lumped on the government to actually implement and they're just never gonna go for it. So I'm very excited for the future of Powerwall. It will take a little while before it becomes common, I think, but I think it's gonna get there. I do hope I do get a Powerwall out of the referral scheme. I don't know if I will, but uh, if I do, that would be awesome. And I will definitely be vlogging the installation of that. I'm gonna get on with all the various bits and bobs that are on my 
list for the rest of today. I hope you've enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, remember to like it and share it and subscribe if you haven't already. And follow me on Instagram if you don't already. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye. I might have a run soon. Oh, I can't <laughs> in the bit soon. <laughs> there you go. That's the reason why he wants me to have a run all of a sudden. Because I told him that if I go for a run, he can watch a bit of tablet while I'm doing it.